We, we didn't start with the idea. We started with finding a problem. A local company gave us a peek at its 375 square foot casita. It's called Boxable. 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 A modular home called Boxable, a futuristic home. Those boxable houses are so cool. Yeah, and they're that's so easy so to set cool. up yeah, and it's so like cool. you just order it on Amazon. Yeah, it's so cool. I believe we can get a, a home down to about every 10 minutes. Boxable, a company breaking new ground that is Nevada built. This is a foldable home and the goal is to eventually make one every 10 minutes in this factory. Traditional homes take months to build. Paolo Tiramani saw that problem and wanted to find a way to revolutionize the way we build homes. This is all happening right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. These homes are also affordable, less than $50,000. They're small enough to be shipped anywhere around the globe. I had the privilege of sitting down with Paolo to get the scoop. Was the first order Elon? What? We can talk about that now. So obviously, we were an under, under an NDA and, you know, we were concerned that one of his satellites would send down a laser beam and destroy the factory if we talked outside of the NDA. So we got a call from SpaceX, we got a call from Elon Musk's staff, and they kept calling. My business partner was like, yeah, I don't think it's real. And eventually, uh, eventually we figured out it was real. And we said, well, look, we have three prototypes and you can't have one. And they kept, you know, rather persistent. So we said, fine. We put one of the prototypes on a truck, trucked it down, unpacked it, the SpaceX guys were very generous uh, with their time and assist in unpacking it and I believe uh, he's using it as a as a guest house it is a prototype I guess what is the holdup why can't I have one of these now It's Ellie in Space, I'm here in Las Vegas, and I'm here at Boxable, and we're about to go on a factory tour here. Let me get us inside here. Open Sesame, they kind of have this sort of Disneyland theme going on. If you come here and take a tour, you're actually gonna ride around in one of the golf carts and see all that there is to see here. And that's one of the really exciting things about Boxable, they're so transparent with the public. So just cause I'm a YouTuber, you can actually come here yourself and also tour this amazing facility. I feel like we're on like a, an amusement park right Yeah, now. that's typically <laughs> what I like to tell everybody where. I usually uh, joke around with people and tell them we're about to go down a big hill <laughs> and they get all freaked out. <clears throat> we moved into this factory last year in July, started production in September. Our first order was for the military, for the Department of Defense. They ordered 156 units, which we were able to fulfill back in May. So we're super excited about that. We just signed our lease for factory two which is located just on the other side of this building right here in the middle, closest to the highway. Uh, Factory 2 is going to add an additional 130,000 square feet for a total of about 300,000 square feet between Factory 1 and Factory 2. Our current goal in this factory is to be able to produce 3,600 casitas a year, which breaks down to 10 a day, one every 90 minutes. Currently, we're only producing two a day. So as we revamp our uh, production line, add more automation, more workers, more shifts, fine tune things, we'll be able to reach that goal of one every 90 minutes. We do want to build a larger factory that's going to be 10 to 20 times bigger than this one, something about a million to a million square feet, that we're able to add customization options, build larger units such as 20 by 30s and 40s. Uh, we do want to keep that factory here in Las Vegas, as Vegas is a business friendly state, uh, but we're open-minded to going wherever the opportunity is right for Boxable. This is a cutout sample of one of your panels. Your casita is made up of 13 insulated panels. So your exterior is gonna be this galvanized steel. Your middle layer is gonna be this polystyrene, which is gonna be your six inches of insulation. And then this interior layer is gonna be a material called MGO or magnesium oxide. Mm. Very similar to like your sheetrock or drywall. It does hold up to 90 pounds per square inch. So you're still able to mount your TVs, pictures, just like normal. And it is mold, uh, wind, water, fire, and insect, resist in insect resistant. Cool. You may see some laminated wood, um, engineered wood and PVC being utilized, which is right here to the right. Uh, that is just so we can create the perimeter of each panel, kind of like a picture frame. But this laminated engineered wood is never exposed. So if you take over, a look over here to the right, this is where they cut and measure all that laminated wood and PVC, bond it together, and then get it ready for the first part of the production line staging. And these storage tanks right here, they're filled with a polymer-based glue. And that's going to be the adhesive we use to bond our materials together. So these two machines right here with the black and yellow tape, the gray and the white one, 
What's gonna happen here is our material, our workers are gonna put a layer of material. These two machines right here are gonna go down, uh, dispense a layer of glue. Our workers are gonna put another layer of material and then it's gonna go on so forth until the panel's complete. Very similar to like a layer cake concept. Huh. Once that's complete, we're gonna bring you down into stage two, which is lamination. And lamination, these two machines right here are very similar to like a vacuum seal, only they're a press. They're gonna apply 72 tons of pressure, which is gonna ensure that that glue we just laid down is evenly distributed, and it gives us that nice cure we're looking for. Once that's complete, we're gonna bring it out onto this tilt table right here with the white prongs. And if it's a floor panel like you see right here in front of you, or a roof panel, it's gonna get installed this steel hinge beam in the middle of it. That steel hinge beam is important to us because it gives our panels the structure and the ability to be able to fold. So I'll show you a little bit up close look at what that looks like down the production line. If you want to take a look over here to the right real quick, this is some new technology that we have here at Boxable. So um, our polystyrene comes pre-cut with these holes and chases. So now we're actually going to start, we order it like that, and we're actually going to start cutting it in-house, which is going to roughly save us about $5,000 a unit. Wow. And then we hope to actually be able to make this in-house as well in the future. So one of the many ways that Boxable is coming up with uh, different ways to be able to save money. So once that process is complete with the steel hinge beam, they're going to bring it over onto these carts right here, where they're going to move it into mudding and sanding. They're going to sand down all those seams of that MGL, make it nice and smooth for the painting booth. So here at Boxable, currently we don't have any customization options. Everything is pretty cookie cutter for the moment. We do uh, hope to have customization options when we move into a larger factory. But for right now, your casita is just going to get painted this nice white on the inside. But you're more than welcome to paint it however you like when you actually receive your own unit. As the walls will be able to be painted just like a normal wall. How long have you guys been giving tours? Um, I believe since we opened, since we started production, I wasn't here back then, but I do believe like shortly after we started production, Okay. So maybe almost going on a year. Wow. This is so cool. So once the painting process is complete, we're now on stage four power. This is where that polystyrene being pre-cut really comes into play. As our workers will be able to just run all that electrical through the wall, do all the cutouts for the electrical, and then move it over to the assembly stage. So we install LED lighting in our casitas. Our appliances are all energy efficient. And then we install a mini split system, which is gonna be your HVAC system, your heating and your cooling. With all that technology combined, you're looking at a rough estimate at about $28 a month for your electric bill. So one of the many ways Boxable saves So when can money. I get one of these? Right, exactly. <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into assembly, take a look at our overhead crane system. We recently just extended it past the finish line and all the way up here before assembly. We utilize this crane system for the safety and efficiency of our workers. A finished casita weighs about 15,000 pounds. So as you can imagine, things start getting really heavy around this time. So we use the crane system to navigate the panels down the different staging locations as they go to get installed. Cool. So if you take a look over here at this casita, you'll see the bathroom is on the right, the kitchen is on the left. And above that kitchen window cutout is that mini split system I was mentioning. It is rated for up to 400 square feet. So that is more than enough to be able to heat or cool your casita. So as we get into assembly, as you can imagine in assembly, they're gonna start adding all those finishing details to make it move and ready. So they're gonna start adding all your cabinetry, your appliances, finishing up that plumbing, and adding all those little details that it would need to be moving ready. To like be I at mentioned. home. Yep, exactly. So you can see these casitas in each staging location. It goes from one all the way to 10. And, it, and each staging location, little details get added as it goes down the production line. Ah. So you can see it really goes from nothing and to a little bit to a lot of it. They're moved on those, it looks like they're on wheels, kind of? Um, yeah, they navigate them on those like little rollers, but they also oh. use the crane system to help them as well. Gotcha. Cool. So you can see the casitas in its 20 by 20 dimension right here. And they're adding all the, you see how right there, there's no windows and then a little bit of the roof. And then right here, they almost got the whole roof. The windows already installed, just in a matter of one staging location. Can you connect the units? Yes, anywhere where there's a window or a door. 
So we get a lot of questions on how our casitas connect and how we ensure that nothing goes in and nothing goes out. So I'm gonna show you an example of that right here. So when our casitas are going to get shipped, the panels sit on top of each other, something similar to this. When they go to get installed, wherever these black rubber gaskets are, they're gonna meet the other side of the panel. They're gonna to come together and they're gonna create this airtight seal that we're looking for. And that's gonna ensure that nothing goes in and nothing goes out. Very similar to like a uh, car door concept. These right here to the right are <clears throat> those uh, steel hinge beams that I was mentioning to you. It's one of our 53 patents and pending here at Boxable. With this steel hinge beam and other technology, you're looking at a rough estimate at about two to $10 per mile shipping outside of Las Vegas. So very cost effective. So think of like manufactured homes, like trailer homes. They're not a new concept, but the magic of Boxable is that we're able to take something that's 20 by 20, like you saw back there, and fold it down into something that's 20 by eight and a half, about 12 feet tall. So the reason that eight and a half number is so important to us is because anything under eight and a half doesn't require a wide load shipping permit and all those extra costs that come with that. Oh, wow. So I'm gonna take you outside real quick. You think we can make it? High clearance? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're on like a Hollywood lot or something. Oh, we are. The boxable <laughs> Hollywood lot. <laughs> So these are what the casitas look like when they're fully ready to be shipped. So during it's they're in their 20 by eight and a half dimension, about 12 feet tall, like I mentioned. We wrap it up with this extra protective so it doesn't get dinged up or damaged during shipping. We add our logo on it, and then we stick it out here for the customer to be able to come pick up. Wow. So this is our little island of casitas. So as you can imagine, we have a lot of people on our waiting list right now, about 120,000. That is worldwide, not just the US. In order to join our waiting list, all you have to do is go to boxable.com <clears throat> under reservations. You can join for free, which I recommend everybody doing, or you can put down a deposit of 200 to 5,000. The higher deposit you put, the higher ranking you have on the waiting list. Our team is working hard right now on gathering all the information we've collected for the waiting list. So we can start letting people know where they rank based on their deposit. And then as we get closer to actually selling to the public, we'll be able to have a better timeline on when we will get to each individual person's order. But some people are currently living in these, correct? Uh, we did an order for the government, for the military, and they're the ones living so there right are. now. So okay. um, I don't know what the feedback is on that just yet. I know it's very, we just uh, shipped the last ones like in early, mid-June. Okay, so, they're so very new. Someone okay. like a little bit higher than me would probably know what the feedback on that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But yeah, so our workers right now work four days a week, Monday through Thursday, 10 hour shifts from uh, 5.30 to 3.30. And then we use Fridays as a research and development days and just to kind of catch up on everything that was worked on during the week and get ready for the next week. How many workers work here? Uh, we have about 200, cool. which a majority of them are factory workers. And then we have about 30, roughly 40 uh, office employees here. So fairly simple process, very easy. One of the frequently asked questions is if you can have solar or go off grid with your boxable and the answer is yes. You can set up your utilities, whether that's having a water tank or having solar panels the same as you would regular utilities with your boxable. And this is a Tesla solar roof. And if you wanna do a deeper dive into solar energy, Brilliant has a great course that they offer to learn all about harvesting energy from our most renewable source, yes, the sun. In this course, you'll examine the principal methods of harvesting energy from sunlight, concentrated solar power, and photovoltaic cells. Now this is starting from fundamental physics principles. In other words, beginners are welcome. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, science, and computer science interactively. And they have thousands of lessons with exclusive new content added monthly. Now this is college level content for everyone. With Brilliant, you don't have to spend four years and a lot of money to understand this stuff. And don't be overwhelmed. Learning a little every day can have a huge impact. It's super Super easy to get started for free. Now the best way to learn anything is interactively. In fact, you learn six times more effectively with interactive hands-on lessons rather than listening to a lecture. So if you want to sign up 
for Brilliant, you can sign up with my code Ellie in Space. The first 200 listeners will get 20% off of an annual membership. So make sure to check the link in the description. And thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Back here we have our lunchroom for the guys. They get a stipend, daily stipend for lunch every day, which is really nice. And don't be a silly piggy, be like Frank. Whatever Frank tells you to do. And that's very <laughs> nice. And up here we have, you know, a boxable highway and uh, lamination lane. Love it. And we really do that for the customers and the fans because a factory does not need uh, roadways striped out particularly and giant banners. But we've really patented after Disneyland, as, as we spoke about, just to give the fans an experience because right. we're so grateful to them. And it uh, works pretty well. They love it very much. Over here to the right are these huge insulation blocks that uh, create, create the, the, the walls of the boxables for the insulation. Insulation is super important, obviously, and uh, it does an incredible job. Basically, you know, if you want to stay warm, it's a thermos, and if you want to stay cool, it's a cooler. So it keeps the temperature inside. We're thermally very, very efficient. Your monthly bills would be about something like $28 a month is all part of the box support plan. Over here on, on your right, you see these giant steel beams. You don't normally see those in a tiny home. And that's because uh, we have a building system that can make very, very large objects and they're all uh, custom made. Here we have in front of us Bye Bye Boulevard. I think we'll probably be the only factory with a green roundabout. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> nice touch, <laughs> nice touch. And we'll take a little, I don't know if you've seen this, but yes, we'll, we'll go but it's to, so cool. Yeah, it's nice to see the boxables like little, I don't know what, muffins or giant iPhone cases. Yeah. And there's a sort of a forest of boxables. I think we lost one or two staff members in here. I'm not sure they ever made it out. So where are so, these going? Uh, so these are going to a mine project in, uh, of all places, Baghdad, Arizona. And yeah, I'm just gonna scoot through and we'll go right, we'll drive right through, I think. And back to, for a mining community, I think it's close to 200 units and we're stacking them uh, too high in what we call an eight pack. So one, one block is eight casitas. And uh, yeah, super interesting. A little dystopian maybe, these giant white cubes, but that's okay. And uh, so, um, as I said, we're making, I think uh, two, two a day. Uh, after the government order, we slowed down a little bit on purpose. We went down to one shift just to correct the things that we couldn't really correct while we were, you know, running so hard to, com to complete that order on, on, yeah. on time. They're going to, they're housing mostly uh, uh, attorneys. There'll be a lot of attorneys. So I'm not sure whose idea it was or whether it was a good idea to sell your first uh, 150 products and then pack it full of Litigi litigious attorneys. Yeah. Uh, but nobody's complained yet, so I guess they're happy. <laughs> so, um, go down here, we'll, we'll hop out and talk about the production line a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, so I know people like to see this. Ellie, here we are on the boxable production line. It's, it's really an automotive style production line. We even had Porsche Engineering come and help us set up the, the factory because we are like an automotive manufacturer. We do have a goal to be grown up one day just like the Ford F-150 that they make a product every 60 seconds. Imagine making a home every 60 seconds. That's our reach goal. We will get there. But our next uh, pit stop is to make one every half an hour. And we should be there by the first quarter. How do we do it? We do it just like this, just like an automotive production line. And what we can see here is that uh, part of the boxable technology means we pack down the empty space, but we don't pack down the dollar dense space. So what is the dollar dense space? Right here is this six, seven foot core. And it almost looks like an automobile. And as we get into full automation, we can see that the robot arms are going to be able to put in the various dollar dense stuff like kitchens, cabinets and dishwasher dryers and things like that. So it's just like a production line. So what we're doing now is we're just literally going forward in time and seeing how this gets built. So you can see in this station, 
we've put in all the interior appliances and then we put the wall over the top of that. And then over here we have the kitchen we were just in and the prototype. Uh, from the prototype to production, it's not your imagination if it all looks backwards because we did mirror everything. And you can see we're able to put in things very, very quickly with great repeatability and great access. If this was a traditional home, you'd have to have people lugging things through doorways. We don't lug anything through doorways because we put the door on afterwards. And then we keep going, keep going into the future as the production lines uh, develops the product. And this is one of my favorite stations here because you can see the boxable technology. When it unpacks, it triples in size. Here is the core. Here we put the wall on and we can see it's actually tripled in size. So what are the benefits of that from a first principles point of view? We solved the shipping problem. The shipping problem solved the manufacturing problem by making it very easy to put the, the, the product into the shells, the configurations into the shells. And then it's just a gift that keeps on giving because then it unpacks three times. So instead of, not only do we ship in a, on a truck with no permits, no wide loads, no flag car, cars, no overstate, overnight stops uh, between states, none of that. We put them on the track, we go. We can go all around the world, but we can ship on one truck three times the volume of what somebody else would need three trucks, trucks to ship. Wow. Pretty damn green. Yeah, so. super cool. <laughs> That's so crazy. Up on here. And uh, above me up here, we can see the roof, how the roof unfolds. And you can just think of it like a big box. These panels just unfold. Much easier said than done, I can tell you. And you can see these black stripes are gaskets so that when it shuts up it shuts up like a bank vault or a car door oh. you know you go down the road in your car at illegal speeds and there's no <laughs> whistling uh by the doors and there's no whistling uh here and you don't even have to uh go very fast there's just no sound so there's nothing underneath this right now because of the way we make our panels we make them with all new technology these are basically steel concrete and insulation enormously rigid and you can see there's not a lot of flex. It's just held up at the four corners as we go through production. So, just be careful with your step here. So it's a great time to come by because we just finished the shift. And now we can see the product getting finished and unpacked. Uh, these are beautiful when the protective film comes off. This is just like your iPhone case. You take the film off and it's all perfect. Um, that way and maybe we'll go into this one over here the lights are up but the camera's pretty good so home sweet home, home, sweet home. so this is just like the one we were in before except it's nearer and you can see that uh, it's a really pretty large space and you don't have the furniture in and you can see you know the production level here they just do touch up on the paint uh, but you can see the production level quality and even the production shower if you just want to look in there is now you know eight foot tall and we've made our own shower as well so uh, when we can't buy what we want at the quality and price that we like we just go ahead and design and engineer it ourselves nice yeah so in the future we're we're, we're analog right now but analog means we don't really have uh, any significant robotics or anything like that. Uh, our engineering team is working to a full, what they call a lights out factory. So I think it's a Japanese term where it's so automated you could literally turn the lights out. Oh wow. Of, of course we're not gonna do that, that would be completely stupid and, danger <laughs> and dangerous, so we're not really turning the lights out. <laughs> but uh, we're looking for a lights out factory. And in front of us here are the, um, the panels themselves. Uh, incredibly strong panels. And we call this the panel library. And we can see, for example, that all the holes are cut in by a computer. These, are, these round holes clearly for lamps uh, above. And we can see on a smaller panel here that it is a wiring harness that goes in uh, just like a car. So it's a wiring harness like a car, not, 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 a, not a house uh, 
on us. So if you guys happen to be in Las Vegas and want to take a tour here at Boxable, there are two different tours. There's a casita unit outside that's open all the time, or you can come in here and take a factory tour, but these are reservation only. They're open Monday through Friday from nine to five. But if you want to see the factory actually come alive and people working on the casitas, you'll have to do it between Monday and Thursday anytime before 3 p.m. So I highly encourage you to come down here I'm so excited for Boxables to be available to the public. So I'm, I'm an industrial designer by training, a uh, lot of history with uh, intellectual property, mechanical patents and things like that. And uh, we invented a lot of stuff over the years and decided we should be an operator in a space. And if we were going to be operators in a space, we should challenge, you know, we should find a big problem. So obviously this is rather a big problem. And it's just really as easy, maybe easier to attack a big problem than a small problem. And we, frankly, we wanted to do some good. We saw that uh, housing was a global housing crisis. Certainly we have a national uh, crisis. And it's, the reason is because it's basically uh, a pre-industrial business. Pre-industrial meaning simply that it's not in a factory. So building construction is variable costs, low, typically low quality and long lead times. It's not a good business because it's not in a factory. There's no there are no commercial solutions other than Boxable that's coming out of the ground now. So it's been an interesting process. It took us probably, we, we didn't start with the idea. We started with finding a problem right. and then backed into an idea right. uh, once, once we'd identified the problem. So that's sort of the genesis of, of the whole project. Yeah, and how is Boxable going to solve that? Great question. So. Uh, there are a few large inventions and then those large inventions are backed up with lots of smaller inventions. So the big one is that currently folks that try and manufacture in a factory uh, bring old school tools and processes and basically st stick build, which is field built, under a roof with hammers and nails and antiquated, really frankly antiquated materials and processes. And then they build something that's 14 foot wide which is illegal to ship, and then perhaps are surprised when they can't ship it more than 100 miles or 200 miles. So that's the major problem. So what we identified as one of those aha moments is that most building construction is about 70% empty space. Pretty good. And then the 30% that's left is what we call dollar dense. So it's dollar in equipment like uh, dishwashers and kitchens and bathrooms and labor as well to install those things. And we said, well, gee, you know, what if we left the dollar dense stuff alone and just built it, built it efficiently in very, very high wa volume. And the 70% of empty space, why don't we just fold that down? Why don't we just fold that down? So easy said than done, by the way, a lot of engineering. Uh, so we folded it down. The magic numbers are quite shocking. Uh, highway legal all around the world, eight and a half foot wide. And then from the tarmac to the roof is 13 and a half foot. Okay, but what matters is that eight and a half foot number. And so we, un so we pack down to eight and a half feet in about an hour, ship anywhere uh, within our national borders all around the world as the business scales with no flag cars, no permits, no nothing, no additional cost, just re within regular uh, transit infrastructure. And from the eight and a half feet, we unpack to really a staggering 20 feet from eight and a half feet to 20 feet. So the largest of the building shells that we will eventually make will be 20 foot by 40 foot. And that 40 foot with new materials and processes is a clear span 40 foot with a huge nine and a half foot ceiling and windows and doors that you can cut in without headers, without any additional framing. And that sounds like some pretty good first fundamental principles to build most things most of the time. They were telling me that some people are currently living in like government boxables, government owned boxables? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So we started the company in 17, so we're coming out of the ground uh, pretty quickly. Uh, the factory here you see behind me, the sort of vanishing point factory, <laughs> you know, this huge factory, so 300,000 square feet. We've stood that up in the last 14 months. Pretty shocking. It was just an empty shell. And um, yeah, the government came in. Uh, with a bunch of colonels, Colonel Wendy, hello, and um, came in and said, could you deliver 156? And I remember standing here behind me, completely empty shell. Bruh. And I'm 
saying to them, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And they're all going, uh-huh. And I'm thinking, and I actually said to them, you know, this is a startup, right? You know, and we're looking at an empty space. They're like, yep. I'm like, okay. So the government came in, Department of Energy, and we delivered actually a few days early, um, okay. a few months ago. And it was 156 units that have all been shipped out to Florida and beyond. And uh, they, they've all, they're being installed now. They're being unpacked now. Okay. So for our, for our first, well, that was our second order, actually. So to have that as our second order was quite amazing. It was really quite amazing. And it really put a fire on, under us. Uh, they would come down every few months and actually help us with planning and logistics. So the military was actually actually a fantastic partner in the process of standing up, the, helping us stand up the building and produce those first uh, production prototypes, I would say. Was the first order Elon? What? We can talk about that now. Yes. He's 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 talked about it on the floor. He's the talked about it. So he's yeah. Finally talked about it. That's right. So <laughs> obviously we were an un under an NDA, and you know we were concerned that one of his satellites would send down a laser beam and destroy the factory <laughs> if we talked outside of the NDA. But seriously, yeah, they called us. Uh, so the, the 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 short history of the company is it gets a lot of interesting people and a lot of them are not necessarily legitimate so so we got a call from SpaceX we got a call from um, Elon Musk's staff and they kept calling and my business partner was like yeah I don't think it's real <laughs> and eventually uh, eventually we figured out it was real and we said well look we have three prototypes and you can't have one and they kept you know rather persistent so we said fine so we put one of the prototypes on a truck, trucked it down, unpacked it. The SpaceX guys were very generous uh, with their time and assist in unpacking it. And I believe, uh, as I think he said, uh, I haven't listened to it yet, but I understand that he's using it as a, as a guest house. It is a prototype. Um, so um, we did some fun things in there. We put, uh, we put some rocket posters in there for him <laughs> and things like that, you know. And so. it's down there at Starbase. Yes. Yeah, apparently using So it. is he this the is first customer? customer? He is actually customer numero uno. Nice. And I know it's quite remarkable. And uh, the second customer is federal government. Nice. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty 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 good pretty good start, I would say. Did you get to meet him? Uh, no. 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 Huh? Well, I mean, like, man, what a <laughs> what a customer. Yeah, it's pretty good. Since he has talked about that publicly on that podcast, have you guys had more interest? Yeah, I think, I mean, there was, uh, there was a first sort of blush of speculation. Yeah. Uh, wow. is he, does he, is he investing? Is he living it? Blah, blah, blah. And um, we, we weren't at liberty to say anything, uh, which just made the speculation even noisier. Yeah. And it did, we, we, we've always had tremendous momentum at Boxable. It seems to have caught the public's imagination. Uh, and then we definitely saw an uptick when that news came out. And we have seen an uptick uh, in the last um, last week, since the full send guys, yeah. great guys, um, we we'll have to go on there, and uh, yeah, so we, we have actually seen a couple of up upticks, and it and it's great, and we're fans like the rest of the world. Huh. Um, he does everything well. I mean, he's um, he really is brilliant, and so it's just very nice for us yeah. uh, to to get that uh, acknowledgement from from him. Thanks very much. So. <laughs> What, um, I guess, what is the holdup? Why can't I have one of these now? Scale. Scale. So, um, so you see a huge factory behind us. We have uh, three, actually you have 300 square, 300,000 square feet. So that's like six or seven acres. I'm sure somebody will correct me. It's probably six or seven acres under a roof. And uh, we're building a home every four hours. The strategy was to build a home every 90 minutes, you know, two, two per shift right now. We're going to comfortably, I believe, a home about every 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, so you say, well, a home every 30 or 40 minutes, Paolo, you know, that's very, very fast. But that means that this, this factory will be able to produce somewhere between six and 7,000 homes a year. We have an order book with 120,000. So we have 5% annual production. So we're scaling as fast as we can. We're, we're raising cash, raising money. We're doing a billion, a billion dollars with a B raise uh, that's just going to be kicking off soon. Uh, the company has a very high valuation as a tech company because we need to scale massively. 
And so this factory, 300,000 square feet, we're now making plans for uh, factory two slash three, depending on who you listen to, which will be in the four or five million square feet range. So it'll be in the neighborhood of 15 times as big. I think that will be, I know, it's hard to imagine these numbers. And I believe we can get a home down to about every 10 minutes. We can pump out a home about every 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes maybe. Um, you say, well, really, Paolo? And it's like, yeah, we can. Um, Ford F-150, they make the you know, most popular truck on the planet, I think. They make one every 60 seconds. Uh, LG refrigerator, LG are, are OE partners for us, uh, original equipment partners for us. They, I, they, they told us that they make a a refrigerator every 12 seconds. This is what happens when you're no longer pre-industrial, prehistoric. When you're in a f when when you're no longer in the field and you're in a factory, you can take advantage of all the wonderful technological advances that anybody that's in a factory right. can. And uh, and it's not just about speed. So that will give us. So w just to back up, if I may, for a moment, we we moved from a 10,000 square foot R&D lab. Uh, to see test viability and things like that into this now 300,000 square foot factory, which is huge by anybody's um, measure. And we now regard this as just another R&D place. Um, we don't really, we, this, we don't consider this to be really an operational factory, even though making five, six, seven thousand 7,000 homes a year is staggering, we still consider it R&D. So we figured the first really operational factory will be that, let's call it, split, split the difference, call it a four million square foot factory. We think that can be an East Coast, uh, West Coast, excuse me, regional delivery center. And the factory that we're developing, we consider to be a product in and to itself. So it's the product that makes the product, if you like. And we look at the factory and you've gone on the Dis what we call the Disney tour and uh, all the branding that you see, all the minutia the, and all of that stuff uh, all has to be packaged into a product, which is this large factory. Um, so factory three will be that first product factory. For the entire state of Nevada, factory three will produce more export dollars than all other exports in the state of Nevada combined. I know it's a staggering number and we consider that to be a regional facility then we'll put up other regional facilities and then the, the scale from there will be to franchise uh, just like McDonald's so you think hang on houses McDonald's that, that doesn't make any sense but when you think about McDonald's which I'm very admiring of McDonald's as a company they do a lot of things really well and they really have little micro factories all over and they put out really essentially a high quality repeatable product maybe a little not so healthy but I shouldn't say that, somebody will complain, right? <laughs> but um, in, and they have these micro factories, well branded, you know what you're getting, and it's really absolutely fantastic. And they, they, they have the franchisee, they send them the, the, the equipment and the, and the material, they send the french fries and the fry later. So the reason we're creating um, a McDonald's uh, housing factory, if you like, is so we can have that repeatability. And then when we get to factory three, we can literally print those off. We can find governments as partners, major corporations as partners, and we'll be able to uh, send out those franchises maybe a dozen at a time. So that's the scale plan, and that's the big challenge. Apart from, apart from the, the transport challenges and other, other challenges, the transport being the major one, the other part of the invention is how do you scale? to answer your question in a super right. long-winded way, is how do you scale? So I've just taken you on this, on this little journey from, from an R&D prototype to this place, to Factory 3, to a franchise model that allows us to put up four or five million square foot factories that can produce hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of homes a year. Um, a dozen of those factories, two dozen of those factories at a time. And that's the scale of the endeavor that is good, doing good work. And with that kind of big foot approach, uh, we have uh, tremendous leverage to get uh, incredible prices. Uh, I think that the manufactured cost of the product as we continue to scale is going to be very, very shocking to folks. Uh, the, the costs are going to be so low and the quality is going to be so, so high and they're going to get delivered 
very, very quickly. That's yeah. if it goes according to plan. So when, when do you think you'll have the first deliveries to the public? So that's a great question. So <laughs> where we're at right now is, so my consumer, my, my background is, is really consumer goods, consumer products, uh, lots of invent, automotive, all sorts. And uh, the consumer is a very, very tough customer and that product has to be perfect. So uh, we've made uh, hundreds of these things, um, new technology, new materials, new factory, new people. Uh, so I don't consider us to be consumer grade. When we're consumer grade, this, these, these products will unpack super fast, lock up like a bank vault, and folks will be able to pack, unpack, go, go anywhere they want. Um, so we're not there yet. Uh, we have an incredible engineering team. We have some really brilliant minds here. We have aerospace engineers, automotive engineers. Nobody actually really from the building industry except uh, one of our early guys, uh, Kyle. And um, so I think we'll, we'll start, we'll start uh, putting out consumer products at some point, probably Q3 next year, something like that. It's gonna come around quite fast, but that's not gonna satiate demand. You know, every, every month there's more, more demand for the product. Okay. And it's even much, much worse than uh, we're even talking about. That's just for, for the casita, right? That's the pre-orders for the casita, which is this little 20 by 20 um, cookie, yeah, muffin. <laughs> Me too, yeah. they're adorable. So that's like the little, it's a little square one yeah. like that. And if you think maybe when you were a kid, you played with Legos. So the little square one, the little square Lego, mm -hmm. and the little rectangular Lego is the bigger one. And then the in-between one that nobody uses, that one. So those three Lego sizes is effectively what we're making, what we will be making. That's the whole building system as it grows to make most product most of the time. And those boxes or building shells will be able to stack and cantilever and connect uh, to make most, most types of structure. And the sort of the, the pointy end where we're starting is just to take the smallest building shell and we've configured it for this uh, ADU, accessory dwelling unit, mm -hmm. and people have just found their own use cases for it and they've just gone crazy. So th the problem actually for scale is much, much worse because we have a huge order book for just a casita. And if I had to guess in five or six or seven years that the casita will be less than 1% of our total business because the market for normal size homes is much larger than the, than the casita. So the cha our next challenge for sure is scale. Fortunately, we're pretty skilled at uh, uh, the di different disciplines we need in a very short period of time to get to that scale, not least of which is money and capital raising. So the company needs billions and billions of dollars to grow. But you can't just go from zero, zero to raising billions of right. dollars. You have to prove yourself. I think we're ahead of the curve and where we should be in terms of pr proving out the technology, consumer interest and things like that. Um, things that weren't even possible six months ago, nine months ago, three months ago, we can consider now including our next raise and putting in the plans for, for a, a really a full production scale factory. I've heard some people accuse them of being flimsy. How's what? That, how is that not? <laughs> yeah, they just look at them and think they're not going to hold oh, up. Oh, that's life. interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so you know, everything's fully tested. Everything's hurricane rated for Florida, and actually, it's the it's it's opposite land. Um, normal homes are made of little bits of wood nailed together, and they are really really flimsy. We use something called a, a structurally insulated panel. There's, there's no air gaps or anything inside the walls. Our homes are made of steel and concrete and insulation. These things are insanely strong, much stronger than traditional buildings. First of all, they have to be engineered to ship. So that puts certain stresses on them. Secondly, they have to be engineered to pack and unpack, fold and unfold hundreds and hundreds of times, which we've done with our own testers and, and things like that. And then the other part of it is, you know, as I hope a, con a socially conscious company and our own design philosophy and first principles, we, you know, we have a forever approach to design. How long should it last? Forever. Mm -hmm. Is it going to last forever? No, it's not going to last forever. Nothing lasts forever. But the approach is that it should last forever, especially your home, yeah. especially your home. You know, in, here in America, we don't have homes more than a couple of hundred years old, but 
you know, in Europe and the UK, you know. Yeah, where are you from? Uh, so I'm a flag-waving American, giant flag at the back of the factory, but I did grow up in uh, London. Okay. I, did, I became a citizen a long time ago. I'm a huge patriot, especially when you come from Europe. That'll get me into, tr into trouble, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Well, I heard an accent, and I couldn't tell yeah. where it was from. Well, the accent, everybody likes the accent, so why on earth should I lose it? Because right, well, so. your name is Italian, though. I know. I'm so confused. Yeah, I'm, I'm so confused, confused too. <laughs> Paolo Tiramani, yeah. Actually, English is my second language, but uh, well, it's Italian oh, family. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice, also. nice. Um, Mm, now I want you to say something about boxable in Italian. <laughs> Possiamo parlare della boxable, sono bellissimi. <laughs> it's beautiful, it is. Yeah. Um, and it's cool that you give the factory tours. Like I, I love how transparent. Yeah. What was the inspiration to do that? Yeah, that's 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 a really great question. So uh, I just have to take one step further back, if I may. When we were doing early raising, um, my business partner and I put uh, several million dollars into a feasibility study at the beginning to see if we should take it further. And then we decided to take it further. We said, okay, let's go out to money. And uh, we went out to institutional money, you know, VCs and venture capitalists and angels and things like that. We spoke to them. And of course, th typically at the startup stage between a uh, the founders and, and and capital, there's a difference in how the project's going to play out, and there's a difference of opinion on the value of money. The, the founders tend to overvalue the, their product, and the, and and the investors tend to undervalue it. I'm actually on the side of the VCs. I'm not on my own side. Uh, those early stages, say, well, yeah, you fellas haven't done anything yet, and you're valued at this. And we're like, well, no, because that's not going to work. So um, Galliano, my business partner said, uh, why don't we give crowdfunding a shot? And I'm saying, is, is that for like fizzy orange drinks and <laughs> shoe lifts and some crazy stuff like that? And he said, let me give it a shot. So then, so, you know, fast forward a couple of years and um, I, I don't know that we are, but I think that we are the most successful crowdfund in history. Um, it's wow. pretty pretty shocking. We've blown out. We've blown the doors off uh, Start Engine and Republic and all these places. And beyond those crowdfunding venues, we actually bring in more dollars through just our own portal. Here, we've raised I think around 120 million. I'm not actually sure if I'm allowed to say that. And the SEC will get upset. Maybe we can check. That with Galliano. Yeah, so we maybe check that, we can see that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we are, uh, I believe, the most successful fundraiser in history, it's, and it's accelerating. Yeah. So, to get to answer your question. The tour behind you. Yeah, to answer your question, <laughs> uh, really super grateful to the investors and the public. They're really fans at this point. And so, when we opened the factory, we said, let's do a Disney tour. We've all been to Disneyland, the doors open by themselves, you have to put on something, you get in the car, and we're gonna give a tour. So we did that, we, we, we patterned that after Disney up front, and we're designers first and foremost, so we wanted to do that, it's our nature to make everything beautiful. So we did, and then we carried it on through to the factory, uh, where everything striped out with the roadways, and Bye Bye Boulevard, and Lamination Lane, and the customers have, um, have a great time. We're going to have a, a hitting wall at the back where customers can get out and hammer the panels back to your nice. conversation about strength. So that was, that was the original idea, yeah. was just a thank you. And then a lot of things with, you know, things when you deal with, with first principles in the way you develop a business or a design, uh, there are positive unintended consequences. And in that case, they all in social media talk about it and uh, it just steamrolls, snowballs, and uh, it just brings more awareness, more reservations, more, more dollar investments. Uh, wow. The dollar investment is, is super popular. I think it's $1,000 minimum for, for, unaccredited, for unaccredited, so you don't have to prove anything. Um, it's more for accredited, and um, I think we've handled that really well. So that was the genesis for the Disney, the Disney tour. I and when we franchise those factories, those McDonald's style factories, that will all be included. They will have to put up their Disney tours right down to, the, we call them fabs up front. The, the, the three guys up front are only allowed to 
there we go. Some yep. People taking tours. Dozens of people come every day. It's quite wow. staggering. And the fabs that we have, the, the job title is fabulous. They're only allowed to wear white. And uh, they, love, they love their work. They give, uh, give tours. Yeah. No, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. We won't let you crash into anything, it's good. You're in a safe space, <laughs> as, the, as the internet would say. <laughs> no, don't sit down. <laughs> oh, that's priceless. That's priceless. This is very disorienting, but very cool. It's great. So this is Ellie with breaking news, seeing a one bedroom boxable prototype. I don't even have a washer and dryer in my apartment. <laughs> well, I like the closet. Yeah. So are we calling that Wonder Wall? <laughs> it sounds like the wall talking. <laughs> well, you know. I've had worse. <laughs> so, uh, when am I moving in? We'll have you do an overnight first. I like it. Yeah, it's pretty good. It right? feels really, like, spacious. Yeah, it is. I mean, this, these, are, these will be around 600 square feet. They have a front door and a back door. And you, can put the, you can put the doors on any of the walls, which is, you know, depending on your lot, you can have, you can have it townhouse style or, you know, front long, front to back. You could do cottage style. So Ellie, this is actually the boxable prototype that we're in. It's, a, it's a very representative of the final product, except the final product is a whole lot nicer. And what you can see is, um, this this product's probably been unfolded. We must have had eight, nine, ten thousand people through here. It's been folded and unfolded dozens and dozens of times, and it's just a prototype. But people love the design. You see, first things you you can feel, maybe rather than see, is these tall nine and a half foot ceilings. Uh, the windows and doors are all you know around you know six one, and these are eight foot tall uh, windows and doors. And on the production casitas, this is actually the front door. See, you just need giant scissors, but we cut that out for you in production. And we can see some other uh, configurations here. And we call this the front of the house, which is, uh, you know, where you basically have your daytime, you're watching TV, hanging out. And if I swap places with you, we can see really a very large kitchen and a lot of attention to human factors with the, uh, the air conditioning above the window, the window above the, 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 the sink, and full-size appliances. Everything's big. Just because you're living in a small space doesn't mean you don't need to shop for the week, including a bottle of shampoo, which apparently somebody's been drinking from. But, you know, we'll look, we'll look for the drunk guy. Big Z-Wave countertop, tons and tons of uh, cooking space. Uh, nice breakfast bar for two, with some really nice whimsy here with the little lamp so you can sit down with your significant other even if your significant other might be a laptop to get some work done <laughs> um, so that's the front of the house and then the back of the house is the back quadrant so you can see there's this very very wide four foot corridor very little lost core space our designers did an amazing job and uh, the house has a back door so you know 400 square feet or thereabouts and you get a back door so what's good about that just a little yard back there uh, you can leave the door open if you have a fence around it, depending on your use case. Really, really nice. And then in the back, we have full-size queen bed. Uh, so everything is full-size. And a full-size uh, a full-size bathroom with barn door. This one's getting a little tired. A lot of people have been doing this. And uh, full-size shower, stand-up, eight-foot-tall uh, shower. And if you want to check out the, uh, the toilet behind you, uh, right here. Well, isn't, isn't that interesting? And there is a reason we had to put that sticker on there. And what and, is that reason? Well, maybe someone tried to use it. Oh, no! And it's not hooked up. No. So, because it's a little, oh. so, yeah. So this is the casita, uh, 400 square feet, uh, you know, and, and uh, people like it. Very long sight lines. When you're designing a space for human factors and architecture, uh, the sight lines are super important. So 
most things in life, if you shut your eyes, you know, where would we be if we shut our eyes right now? You could be underground, you could be anywhere. So, so a lot of these things are visual. When you're in the casita with the tall ceilings you, and the big windows, you feel small. And normally in life, you don't want to feel small, but when you're in your home, you want to feel small because right. you want to feel like your house is big and putting its arms around you. And this, I think, uh, does that. And it seems the public agrees, including the very long sight lines. So, you know, if I was to sit down here, I, and I'm, I'm living here with somebody, let's say, I can get out of their face. You know, they can go to bed, I can sit down here, and we're not gonna see each other. But you can still see the other corner of the space. So that, that creates a real feeling of, of, of volume. So and these are nine feet tall? Nine, nine, and, a half, nine and a half feet. Nine and a half yeah. feet. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I, for example, I live in a, I live in like a super fancy condo. I have cheesy nine foot ceilings and it's a very expensive place. And here we are in a casita for a few thousand dollars and it has nine and a half foot ceilings. Um, and the other thing to bear in mind is, uh, you know, if you look at, you know, tiny homes made of containers, they're, they're, they're seven foot wide and here's fingertip to fingertip is six foot. So when you look at the space that we're in, it's not, like other, you know, small, mm -hmm. small structures. Mm -hmm. And those ceiling heights are typically eight feet, seven feet, whereas here we're higher than a traditional home, you know, nine and a half feet. So we've sort of, uh, we've, I think, exceeded most of our metrics in what we wanted to do in terms of creating a space that makes you feel good. Because it's, uh, apart from what it's costing you every month, you know, emotionally, it has to make you feel good or we haven't done a good job. So, and I think that's a large part of the success of the product. Even if you guys can't get here in time to reserve a factory tour, you can tour the boxable casita here outside. You can see the parking lot. In front of the house, we call daytime. And we keep your couch and kitchen within easy walking distance. I don't know how to turn off the TV, so we're just going to act things out Vanna White style. Alright, I don't know if it's going to keep talking. Important, do not go to the bathroom in here. Welcome to your Boxable Casita guided tour. The first you'll notice are the tall nine and a half foot ceilings and a great feeling of space and light together with very tall eight foot windows and doors that are all fully three feet wide. All right, you guys, I'm leaving my little casita. Very cool inside. Would definitely love to live in one of these. And I hear that they're gonna have a sleepover. And so I will definitely try to come back for that in a few months and actually sleep in one of these. That'll be super cool. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that future video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Because the doors are going to open magically. The doors are going to open <laughs> magically. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And here we are on the ride.